Hello everyone, in today's video I will explain you how to solve differential equations analytically using MATLAB symbolic math toolbox. Following my standard practice, I created a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. A link to this post is given in the description below. So let us explain the main idea and the main problem. Consider the equation 1. It's the second order linear differential equation and it's ordinary differential equation. It's not partial differential equation. This is basically one constant, this is the second constant, this is the third constant and this is uh, some input function. f of t is a function of time. Some of you who are engineers or who have physics background, you will immediately recognize an equation coming from the second Newton's law. Right. So this can be, for example, mass spring damper system, where m is mass, kd is a damping constant, ks is a spring constant. So our goal is to compute the solution of this equation, that is to compute d as a function of time or as a function of something that's on the right hand side and that thing on the right hand side will be function of time. d double dot d dot are second and first derivatives of d and d in the case of the mass spring damper system can be interpreted as basically a distance. In one of my previous posts and videos I explained how to derive an equation describing the dynamics of the spring mass damper system and you can basically read more about this in this post basically you just need to click over here and this post this post will appear together with the video the goal is to derive an analytical solution of equation 1 that is I don't want to have a numerical solution I can do that by basically using a MATLAB function ODE45, right? I don't want that. I want to derive an analytical solution. I want to de derive a formula for D. So D will be some kind of function of time. Okay, so let's see how to do that in MATLAB. The first step is basically to, de to define the symbolic variables. So I'm going to jump here and this is my MATLAB code. First I'm going to clear the previous workspace, pack the memory and do and clean this command window so everything is empty and then I will define the symbolic variable. The code line 2 defines d of t as a symbolic variable, kd as a symbolic variable, ks as a symbolic variable, mass as a symbolic variable, and force t as a symbolic variable. So if we go back to our post, m is mass, kd is kd, ks is ks, and force is f of t. Okay, now if we type who in MATLAB, we will see that these are the variables and if we type this command whose we will see that they are symbolic functions or symbolic variables that is by saying d of t we are basically specifying a symbolic function d that is a function of time similarly here we are specifying force as a symbolic function of time the next step is to define the second derivative of d and the first derivative of d. We can call this function diff and we can specify the argument d, the second parameter is time and this will be the second der derivative as a third input argument. And similarly the first derivative is defined as d comma t comma 1. So let's execute this and see what happens. And again, if you write whose, we will see basically additional variables 
dot d dot d is now symbolic function and dot d are symbolic function. I'm using this symbol d dot since this is a latex notation for the second derivative for double dot. Okay, so and the next step is now to define our equation. And here I will assume that the force f of t is a sinusoidal function. Note here that actually I'm not using in this code force t as a variable or as a symbolic variable. Instead, I'm simply writing down the right hand side as sinus of t. So this will be our equation for f is equal sinus of t. So if you go back to our dynamics, this f of t will be basically sinus function. It will be a sinus. Okay, so the next step, step after we define the dynamics, here's our dynamics, is to define initial conditions. In order to solve the second order differential equation, we need two initial conditions. We need an initial condition for velocity and for the position. Here I'm assuming that the initial position is equal to 1. Then, the next step is to solve the equation. So we are going to use the function dsolve. We specify our equation and initial condition. And here is the solution. Okay, the solution is too big. So can we simplify this solution? Yes, we can. We can call the function simplify that simplifies the solution. And let's see what we get. Do we get a little bit simpler solution? A little bit simpler solution. Okay, so let's say that I want to substitute the values for mass, ks, and kd into my equation, actually into my solution. I can do that by typing subs. Uh -huh. Now, the solution tree will be computed by substituting mass, ks, and kd by 2, 1, and 0, 1. And let us simplify this solution. Here is the simplified solution. Here is the simplified solution. And we can also expand that solution if we want to have a more complex form. Here it is. Now, it's very difficult to read these, these MATLAB lines of code and the results. So we can also use a more convenient way for plotting the results. So we can use live editor. So if I copy and paste this line of code into my live editor, you just click here, you open a new live, live editor script and you just copy and paste. Let's see what happens. So here's my solution for, and let's see how, the, how it looks. Okay. So this is in a command window. This is an ugly notation. However, I can simply run my code. And here in this nice screen, I will obtain the results. So over here, you can see the variables. They are nicely written. Here is my equation, nicely written. Here are the initial condition, again, nicely written. Here is the first solution, the complex solution, right? A little bit more complex than it should be. You can expand this and you can save. Then, this is the solution 2 that's basically simplified version of the original solution. Again, all the parameters are there. And here's our solution 3. Here we see that the values are substituted. It looks very familiar to people studying ordinary differential equation. We are expecting cosinuses, sinuses, exponential functions, and their imaginary numbers. And using Euler formula, we can represent them as sinuses and cosinuses, right? Here is another form of the solution that's simplified solution tree. We obtain the solution four, and this solution has a very nice form, and most convenient form for analysis and this is something that you will obtain if you do it analytically if you compute a solution analytically 
or by using, for example, Laplace transform. Okay, so the next step is to plot the solution. So let's see how, how to plot the solution. First, we need to define the plotting interval. The plotting interval will start from zero and it will end at 100. So here is the plotting interval. And let us now plot the solution. So I'm just specifying this form of the function that is obtained by substituting the values of mass, ks, and kd. And the function is fplot, very similar to the standard MATLAB function plot. And by executing this, we obtain the function. So this is our solution as a function of time. Finally, let us verify that this approach is valid and that it produces accurate results. So the basic idea is to compare this approach with another approach for computing the analytical solution. The two approaches obviously should produce the results that match. Okay, so let us construct a test case. The equation 2 represents the test case. Again, this is the second order differential equation. I'm assuming that on the right hand side, I have a function t. This problem is much simpler than the original problem we are trying to solve. Since I want to have a formula that's basically relatively easy to verify. That is, I want to analytically derive a formula for d that is easy to interpret and to verify. Now. Let us assume that the initial conditions are d of 0 is 1 and d dot of 0 is 0. However, you can assume any initial condition. It's your own choice. Now, let us use the Laplace transform method to solve the equation 2. Now, if you're not familiar with Laplace methods for solving the equations, the differential equations, you can click over here on Control System Tutorials and you can read several lectures and watch several videos that, that will explain you how to solve ordinary differential equations using Laplace transform method. For example, you can start with basic introduction to Laplace transform. They can, then you can read this lecture or this lecture and or this lecture. Or you can read all of them. Finally, this lecture explains how to derive the transfer functions, which are nothing less than basically uh, Laplace transform of your system dynamics, that is of differential equations. So in interest of making this video relatively short, I will not explain all the steps. I will just briefly comment upon the steps that are being performed. So here I apply the Laplace transform to the right hand side and I obtain the equation number three. The Laplace transform of the second derivative is s squared times d of s, where d of s is Laplace transform of d. s is a complex variable, d is a function of time, so there is a transformation here from time to complex domain. And here I have s d of 0 minus d dot of 0. The formula for the Laplace transform of the second derivative of function d is actually this part over here, these three terms. Then I have a Laplace transform of 4d, that's nothing less than 4 times d of s, since the Laplace transform is a linear operator and the Laplace transform of the right hand side, that is of t, is equal to 1 over s squared. Now, I can substitute the initial conditions in this equation and I can transform this equation, that is from this equation I can express d of s. So by expressing d of s from this equation, I obtain the equation number 4. Now, you can basically compute the inverse Laplace transform of the equation 4, and this inverse Laplace transform will give you d as a function of time. You can do it analytically, following 
the approaches I explained in these lectures over here. For example, you can use this approach, you can use partial fraction expansions to compute the inverse Laplace transform, or you can use some other method, depending on your preferences. You will maybe need tables, to look into the tables, to see what are the formulas, etc. But it's relatively straightforward. However, it's time consuming. Instead of doing that, I can use MATLAB. So here is how we compute the inverse Laplace transform in MATLAB. I define a symbolic variable, s. Then I define my d of s, a function. Here it is. And if you go back to the post, here it is, right? This part is defined like this. And then I simply type inverse Laplace ds. i Laplace is the function. And at the end, when I compute it, I simplify the expression. So here is the result. So this is my solution, d of t, when the equation over here is subjected to the function t. I obtain something that looks like this. t over 4, of course, I will have t term. However, I will have some cosinuses and some sinuses since this system has an oscillatory behavior. Okay, so let us now use the approach explained in this video, at the beginning of this video, to compute the analytic solution. So what do I do? Basically, I define a symbolic variable or symbolic function d of t. I define the second and first derivative. I define my dynamics, initial conditions. Plug these initial condition and dynamics in, into the d solve function and I simplify the solution. So let's see the results. Let's see what do we get. Aha! Uh -huh. Here is the result and this is actually equal to the results obtained using the Laplace transform. So here is the result using the Laplace transform and here is what MATLAB is giving us. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you find these videos useful, please subscribe or support my channel. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.